and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Welcome everyone. So good to see so many smiling faces tonight. And if somebody can give me just a thumbs up, Ivy, can you see the screen? Okay. Yes. I see you. Okay. So uh, my name is Landy Martin. Welcome to tonight's Heart and Body Naturals product information call. We love these calls. We love to keep them full of value and fun for you guys. Uh, my name is Landy Martin and I'm a Sapphire director here and a product trainer. And I just want to give a shout out to all these leaders on this slide here. Um, they are incredible servant leaders with tons and tons of knowledge. We are very blessed to have this group, Tina, Megan, Chelsea, and Michelle, who helped me host these calls. And I couldn't do it without them. So I just want to give them a big shout out. So before we dive in, we have a disclaimer. All of our products um, are not designed to diagnose, treat, prevent, or cure any disease. Uh, that's a disclaimer that you will find on any supplement, whether you're shopping at Whole Foods, Walmart, GNC, or anywhere. It is FDA required by law. Um, now, I also want to mention that we start with pure raw ingredients. We work with a world-renowned formulator. Her na name is Alexandria Brighton of the Brighton Institute. She sources ingredients from everywhere to make sure that we have potent products that are clean and pure, but they also work. And that is what is so unique about our company. Our products actually work. She's a master herbalist and aromatherapist and has been an Ayurvedic medical formulator for over 30 years. And we're very, very blessed to have her and work with her. And these are some of the certifications that our products will hold uh, or manufacturing partners, I'm sorry, that we work with that hold these certifications so you can ensure that what you're recommending for your family and friends is clean and pure and good. So tomorrow, you guys, is June 3rd. We are starting our three-day liver cleanse. I'm super excited to do this. I cannot wait. Um, we have three days. We're going to be cleansing our liver. So if you are behind the eight ball on this, hopefully you have some vitality and soul so you can get started with us. If not, go ahead and get your pack and you can pick us up the next time we do it or just do your own three-day liver cleanse. We have the protocol right here for you. And uh, we have actually a three-day liver cleanse kit in the back office now that makes this really convenient. It's got the Vitality Soul Fulvic Acid, uh, HEPA Detox, Lemon Oil, and also the Peppermint Detox or Peppermint Oil Drops. So this is gonna be everything you need to do the three days and also a little bit more. Oh, sorry. That's my husband calling. Oops, he probably forgot I was on a call. And we are starting our Parasite Cleanse June 11th through 20th. And um, while we're gonna have about five days before we start this, okay? So we're gonna do the liver cleanse and then we're gonna start the Parasite Cleanse. We have five days in between. Be sure you're upping the amount of anti-parasitic foods um, like what's listed on this slide here. Also pumpkin seeds, I love pumpkin seeds and they work great against parasites as well. Uh, but you can also get your complete parasite detox kit in the back office. Now, if you get this kit, it's going to contain everything you need to do this cleanse. Guys, I found out today that 80% of people have these. So it's something you probably want to consider doing. Okay. So without further ado, I'm super excited to, in, to introduce my good friend, my bestie, Dr. Ivy Pruse. We've been working together for a long time now, and she's a board certified naturopathic doctor, a clinical herbalist. She focuses on epigenetics and DNA. Um, she just is an incredible teacher as well as a caring, incredible person and doctor. So uh, without further ado, I am going to stop my share and I'm going to let Ivy go ahead. And Ivy, you should be able to have your, your screen sharing now. Yep, I do. Uh, I'm so excited for this class. Oh my gosh. Okay, I see it. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you guys for letting me spend some time with you this evening yet again. Uh, hopefully you guys are not growing weary or tired of my face at this point. Um, a little personal housekeeping. I am a board uh, certified naturopathic doctor, but I am not your doctor. So any decisions you choose to make, please make sure to clear it with the right people in your life. Um, nothing I say here tonight is to be construed as medical advice. I do not cure, treat, or diagnose any diseases. Um, so now that we got that out of the way, we can go ahead and move forward and talk about um, these little critters. Uh, I have to say, Landy asked me if I was excited, and uh, I don't usually experience excitement and cringing at the same time so uh we are gonna move on and uh, hopefully you guys learn some things that you never knew before okay so basically we're gonna do a little quick parasite 101 and i do have to say before i even uh begin 
going over my bullet points here, this really took me back um, to my younger years prior to this lifestyle of being a naturopathic doctor, I really was on the track to complete veterinary medicine. And so this took me back to working to vet offices and doing all these fecal samples, looking for the hooks and the whips and the round worms and things of that nature. And now being a naturopathic doctor, I wish it were that easy for human beings because how simple it is to just identify an animal that you know has these issues, it's so easy, but you know, for human testing, we find it very difficult where all these little guys, they don't make it on the way out. And so they kind of give a false, you know, negative where someone actually has a problem, um, but it's not coming up on the, you know, on the stool examination. So just a little bit of a history there. So basically parasites, okay, these things, these are organisms that live on or inside of a host organism. They are either going to suck your blood or live off of the nutrients that you provide okay they get their food at your expense now they're not they're they don't lack intelligence their goal is not to kill the host because then they die or they have to go then and find another place to live so in reality their their goal really isn't to kill okay so for human beings, we have three main classes of parasites. You're gonna look at protozoa and helminths. These are larger, these largely affect the gut. They're mostly non-pathogenic. They don't like to cause issues. They kind of like to be, you know, like uh, in the back end, you know, where nobody really puts any attention to them. These guys are kind of gonna be mild. They can get out of control, obviously, because we see that today. Um, but then the third category are going to be the ones that we call the ectoparasites. These are going to be kind of like the things, uh, the lice, the mice. These are going to be the ones that attach to your skin and burrow into your skin um, and things like that. So where do they live? You can basically find parasites in unsanitary conditions, but not only unsanitary conditions, you can find them in the soil, in rivers, in streams. Um, bodies of water, swimming pools. They live in mosquitoes, so infected mosquitoes are carriers for them. You know, pets, your cats and your dogs. Um, like I said, unhygienic situations or unhygienic areas, you're going to find more of a concentration of them there. There's one thing you guys should know, okay, when we get into the next slide, we're going to talk about what attracts something like a parasite, okay? Um, and basically parasites go to where their habitat is accommodating for them. You don't see parasites out on healthy fresh lawn. You don't see them climbing up trees and healthy plants and things of that nature. That's not their habitat. Those things are healthy and living and thriving and they don't go towards things like that, okay? Um, so you can find them in contaminated foods. Um, contaminated water. If you travel overseas out of the country, a lot of people tell you, you know, don't drink the water over there unless it comes from bottled water. Well, it's funny that those people can drink their water there and have no problems whatsoever. Again, because the whole issue with parasites is their goal is not to harm you or kill you. Um, the issue we see is when things start to get out of control. And how can you get them? Well, they pass through um the mouth or the skin okay touching dirty hands you shake hands and the person didn't wash their hands and they might have um some non-visible little larva on there um, and you might touch your mouth afterwards or you get it from contaminated food or water um, eating something that wasn't fully cooked properly or if it was cooked properly then it wasn't taken care of and stored properly okay um pets and your mouth. Uh, sometimes I kind of go crazy when I see people sharing ice cream with their dogs. Um, you know, they, they clean themselves and an animal is wired to clean themselves. And that means they clean their private areas as well. And so if there are some parasites that are exiting your pet's body and they happen to clean it up, you know, and then they go and they lick you, this is a very, very possible uh, you know, very effective method of 
transferring those things from them to you. Okay, so like I said before, some of them, they only care about feeding on your blood, and then some of them really just attach to different places in your small intestine or other places in your body, and they literally live off of the food that you consume. So remember, you know what I said, if your body is a hospitable place for them, there's going to be no reason for them to leave. So some basic symptoms. Now, if you guys pay attention to this and you notice some things when we look at um, this little graphic over to the left, a lot of these symptoms, okay, mimic other things as well. Um, when you have chronic fatigue, those dark circles under the eyes, uh, I automatically think of melasma. Um, when moms get pregnant, we sometimes get this pregnancy masking on our face where we really get dark pigmentation in certain areas. Um, also certain areas of our bodies as well. And, you know, here you see one of the symptoms is dark pigmentation, um, low and poor immune system. You have problems sleeping undisturbed through the night. That means you're waking up often. A, a big telltale sign is just grinding teeth. Uh, you don't even know that you're doing it. And you, obviously this happens at night, throughout the night. Um, for women, you're going to see menstrual irregularities. Um, and for both men and women in general, you're going to see hormonal imbalances, um, just emotional instability, um, very quickly to run from being okay to zero to 60 seconds, you know, okay, so you're okay one minute and then you're just lashing out the next minute. So we have inflammation of muscles and joints because we know that they like to burrow there as well. Um, muscle and joints that should make you guys think of arthritis okay uh, a lot of the cases that we see if they just investigate and take um synovial uh joint fluid sample you will most likely see some parasites in there um you know but they're not willing to look into things like that so but most of the time when we talk about i'll arthritis, um, gouty like behavior. Um, how many men and women friends do you have who can't wear their wedding bands because any kind of restriction on knuckles, joints, toes, okay, that's gouty behavior. Think about possible parasites. Um, hair loss, rashes on the skin, automatically I think thyroid problems because thyroid issues mimic this as well. The pale flaky skin, the falling out hair, um, the unhealthy hair, hair that's very dull and brittle and dry. It's not shiny, it's not thriving, it's not healthy. Um, problems digesting, doesn't matter what you eat, things that you've eaten before in the past and you've been okay with it all your life and then all of a sudden you just have problems digesting. Maybe you feel that the food is just sitting there forever in your stomach and it just doesn't get broken down. Um, Rectal itching, that's a telltale sign. You can tell it in your pets too when they start scooting on the floor, you know, and you're like, no, don't do that. Um, but that is a big sign for us uh, as human beings as well. Anemia, right? Because they're either gonna pick to live off of your blood or they're gonna live off of the food that you bring in. Now, when you have a strong pull, pull towards sweets, Okay, that's them. That's because they're going to make you want and crave and desire what it is that they need to continue to live and thrive inside of your microbiome because you're making it hospitable for them. So they're going to make sure that they send out signals, okay, and release chemicals that make you crave and push you towards sweets and the white breads and the cinnamon rolls and and the pastas and all this stuff that is going to be immediate sugar fuel for them uh, i find it amazing that just like cancer they thrive off of sugar and they thrive off of a very acidic environment okay so rapid weight loss distended abdomen where you can be super slim and then you look like you're nine months pregnant maybe six months pregnant maybe consider that there's an issue here with parasites um desire for salt this shouldn't surprise you uh it shouldn't be don't think in your mind that it's contradictory how can you have such a strong pull towards garbage and sweets and then also have a desire for salts well remember they're ripping everything away from you all of your electrolytes all of your essential minerals that is why you're gonna now have some um out of the blue cravings for salt 
stronger than you've probably ever experienced before. Okay, so this isn't just like a, a typical issue where you like your food well seasoned. No, it's not that it's just random during the day you're living your life and you just want a salty drink or you want something that's salty and so you lean towards a salty food restlessness depression i mean the list can go on and obviously this was beyond the scope of this call to identify all of the symptoms but by far these are some of the most vital important ones where you can definitely identify within yourself and say okay you know i can single out several of these personally for myself so why prep and health in general is important okay generally the human body you are equipped to keep parasites at bay when you have good stomach acid and good digestion remember i've said through our numerous classes digestion begins in your mouth if you can't break things down properly or you're on this vicious cycle of constantly taking a tums with your dinner right which is a very cheap form of calcium which actually kills your acidity it's this healthy, robust stomach acid that actually kills parasites on entry. So you accidentally ate something that wasn't cooked well, or you ate something that wasn't stored well, and maybe there were a couple parasites on that. Your digestive system knocks it out for you right there on the first shot. So that's why good digestion is key, not only for just overall health, but because your digestion is part of your immune system that is a protective mechanism for you, and that hearty stomach acid is going to attack parasites the moment that it enters into that stomach area um good hygiene right so you know you don't want to go to a gas station bathroom and open and close the doors and then go eat a sandwich or your chips in the car you know without washing your hands um dietary choices you're only gonna have a problem with parasites and i mean a problem that gets out of control you're going to have a problem when you continue to feed them what they like in their environment. So if you're going to make your inside microbiome a garbage place to be, then expect that they're going to be happy living there because they only go where their environment is hospitable to them. So even if they make it through your stomach acid and your internal microbiome is just not a hospitable place for them, they're going to pass right through. They're going to immediately identify this is not going to be a hospitable place for me to live any kind of time of my life in here okay so remember those things at, you know as you make your choices and this is why we've been talking about um this past week you know this is why um let's gear up let's stop sugary foods let's stop junk foods let's make sure we're walking 25 minutes a day in the sunshine you know 30 minutes a day all of these things they just do miraculous things for you and they already make it be a place that parasites are not going to be happy to be there now this is going to be a vicious cycle this is a lifestyle that weakens your immune system it attracts those parasitic infections and yet parasites on the flip side of the coin they make sure that they maintain a weakened immune system in you as the host because a weak body is their breeding ground weak wasting bodies are the buffets in the parasite world it is a body that will encourage growth and proliferation for them so it they don't have this superpower to just um go ahead and get inside and start calling shots and changing things around they don't have that power to do that they go on in evaluate what the circumstance is and identify whether it's worthwhile staying there or not okay now, there's one thing that I would like to say before I keep on going. A long, long time ago, human beings, we had an understanding with parasites. We understood that they are part of the world. We understood that they're never going to be disappeared. They're never going to be not around. Parasites break things down for us, okay? You remember that song when you go down into the ground and then the worms do their job and then, okay, they're always going to be there. It's a matter of them staying in their environment where they belong as opposed to you becoming an environment where they want to be in, 
So a long time ago, you used to go harvest your fruits or your grain or whatever, and you would eat as you're harvesting things. You think you didn't consume any worms back then? Yes, you do. Worms do their job. Parasites do their job. They go on into the intestine. They start breaking some things down that maybe needed to be broken down. You get extremely loose stool, and then they pass right through. Unfortunately, that's not the case today. Things are very, very different today. Uh, I come across tons of people who just think that what we really should want is to live in a 100% sanitized world. And guys, that just doesn't exist. And I think if we can just get to this place of understanding, we will be much more at ease understanding why we do what we do and having a better time doing it and being more effective, not giving up, not getting lazy, or and just seeing things through. So I just wanted to throw that in there because, you know, a long time ago, this is how it was. People knew they were possibly eating, you know, a couple of parasites in their fruit that they didn't wash when they were out there harvesting it, putting it in their buckets, and it was no big deal. Now, our natural tendency for bad habits, this is what their fuel is, okay? while healthy habits are their kryptonite. So keep that in your mind. When we target them with a specific cleanse, like you guys are gonna get ready to do very shortly, they release a bunch of neurotoxins. This is why a lot of the symptoms of them are affecting normal hormonal behavior, neurotransmitter behavior, okay? They're gonna release heavy metals and other toxins as you kill them off this is going to enter into the fluid that surrounds the cells so these toxins are going to travel to your lymphatic system we've been talking about that having a healthy lymphatic system having a healthy liver why because from the lymphatic system they pass onto the spleen shoot into the lymph nodes and then the liver and then the gallbladder and then it decides whether it's going to remove the waste your body decides whether we're going to remove it through colon through bowel movements through kidneys urine or through the skin you know you might get a rash or you you know it might be ringworm kind of thing um so the main characteristic of our intestinal epithelial barrier this is the ability to repair damaged mucosa okay mucosa is your first line of defense you have mucus lining in your nose in your mouth down your trachea you have it all over all through your intestines large and small and colon everything your mucosa is the big boy here if you don't have a healthy mucosal system your immune system is already not set up properly to start you know fighting these guys off but this is what they do uh, a healthy commensal community okay gut junctions rely on mucosa remember we talked about leaky gut well one of the big things about leaky gut is there's no longer a healthy layer barrier of healthy mucosa Mucosa is what your good bacteria and probiotics and all of that commensal community, that's what they stick to. That's how they're kept alive in your healthy mucosa. That's how you have healthy gut junctions. So somebody that's completely stripped of their gut mucosa, they're going to have severe leaky gut. They're going to have the most probability of parasites actually getting through the gut and getting into the blood, which is not what you want. When these parasites get out of control, they use our apoptosis system to increase permeal uh to increase epithelial permeability this is a big problem okay while parasites don't have a superpower to go inside and change your environment to what they want it to be unfortunately when they get out of control they do have the ability and they do affect p53 i've talked about p53 before when we went over black seed okay um, P53, it's the guardian of the genome. That is who controls our cell apoptosis kill switch. But now parasites, when they get out of control, they actually make your healthy epithelial cells turn on their kill switch before they're even ready to die. So you see different cells in your body, they replenish sometimes every three days, every five days, every 10 days. Epithelial cells are roughly three to five days. So if parasites are out of control and they're making your epithelial cells on day one commit suicide, you don't have reinforcements for another two to four days. This is why it becomes a problem and this is how you can tell that they're really getting out of control.
Okay, so let's talk some kit benefits because I love everything about this. Um, when we talk about purge, dandelion, one of the best pure, blood purifiers there are. Blood builders, it builds your blood. It provides all of the nutritive salts for your blood that it needs to stay healthy. It's rich in vitamins and minerals and it helps keep your liver clean. So not only are we targeting parasites, but we're making sure that adjacent organs that are going to help us as well, that we keep them happy, we keep them nourished, and we keep them healthy as well. It's got burdock, which alleviates congestion of your lymphatic system. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Muted, Somebody was unmuted. Sorry. Okay. Um, so burdock, it's going to alleviate congestion of your lymphatic system. This helps your kidney and your bladder. It helps reduce swelling if uh, of present joints, if that's what you have going on. Um, pal de arco, this is, uh, well, pal de arco and cat's claw and sheep sorrel. These are all powerful anti-parasitics. Sheep sorrel is very well known for anti-cancer as well. Um, it's uh, the benefits with leaky gut, tremendous, colitis, gastritis, any kind of viral infections. It's these three put together are very multifaceted. And I love it that I see a formulation like this because this is where I would go if I were to be the one formulating something myself. I This is exactly where I would go. Um, guys, fulvic, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I mean, do I need to even talk about it? We already know how amazing it is, okay? What I love about the lymph detox and the HEPA detox is that they are already diluted for you. They're already in a carrier oil, so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, this isn't the time for HIIT workouts, okay? When you are doing a cleanse of this nature, whether it's a liver cleanse, a kidney or bladder cleanse, or a parasite purge, this isn't the time you're going to be going to the gym and trying to pump you know, 250 pound bench press. This is a time where you're asking a lot from your body. And because of that, you need to be kind to yourself. You need to be kind to your body. Brisk walking really does a good job. Stretching does an amazing job. Again, I just want to focus on the fact that this isn't the time where you're going to be going and running five miles. Okay. So you need to just understand what's going to go on. There may be some sugar cravings, Something like a peppermint tea would be phenomenal for that. Eating a very fatty protein, um, fat curbs sugar, okay? And so the beauty is, is that hopefully you have time to prepare for this before you jump into this. But once your body start, stops burning fuel for sugar, sugar for fuel, um, they're gonna have no chance, okay? And you're not gonna exactly feel well right away. Um, you know, you might feel like you want to give up, but eating something, a fatty protein is going to help with those sugar cravings. It's going to help with those kind of little tension headaches. Also, a peppermint essential oil roll on on the temples is great for uh, those tension or migraine headaches. If that doesn't help you or give you enough relief, you can always try an eighth of a teaspoon of real salt dissolved in a small amount of water. I'd say like four ounces, right? If you experience any kind of things like fatigue, that is just a sign to maybe half the dose, okay? Maybe half it and see how you do then. So I already went over the uh, not a time for HIIT workouts or anything like that. One of the things I love to do with the lymph detox because it's already pre-diluted for you, um, these are really cheap. You can find them anywhere. You guys ever seen things like this? They're called um, jade rollers right and i just love to put some of that um lymph detox i like to put it around my neck on the sides of my neck here and just roll this on and apply pressure and because these things come in different sizes you can use this all over your body on your legs all the way down under your arm around the breast area you guys don't understand you have lymph nodes from head to toe um they even have small ones tiny ones like this guy for the face you know and i mean I can't express how my life changed when I started um, applying pressure to where my lymph nodes are with these kind of devices. You can even find flat ones kind of like this, where you just 
you know, press firmly. You don't want to hurt yourself, but you just press firmly. You can do this all down your neck. You can do it anywhere. Um, and I have noticed if I ever feel a sore throat coming on where your tonsils are kind of swollen right here, you will feel them become pronounced. My childhood sickness was always strep throat. Unfortunately, I lived on antibiotics. My gut was ruined. I spent a lot of years in my life healing issues that I was going through. I get one of these things and I started applying pressure with that um, lymph detox and they're no longer pronounced. Like by the next morning, if I do this at night before bed with that lymph detox, they're no longer pronounced. I'm already feeling better and I feel that I had a better rest sleep. Now we know that when you're sleeping, that's when the brain actually flushes the fluid and gets new fresh fluid into your brain. You have to have good sleep for that. So I notice that when I do things like this, when I just can take a few minutes for self-care and with five kids, it is really hard. But when I can take a few minutes for self-care before I go to bed, I can identify if there are certain things that don't feel good to me, if I feel off and I just start applying pressure to where my lymph nodes are, very gentle presser, pressure, but enough to feel a very good effect from it, I wake up like a different person the next day. So that's all that I have for you this evening. I'm gonna stop share um, and see if Landy has anything for me or if you guys are just awesome. ready to be done with me. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Ivy, so much love in the chat. Things like I have never known any of this. I'm learning so many new things. Um, Tina had a question. As far as the pressure on the lymph nodes, what direction do we need to be going down? Do you just apply back and forth? Like, do you have okay. a recommendation um, there? Also, if I'm, if I'm working my lymph nodes from my neck, I'm going down everywhere i'm going down and even from the back of my spine underneath here i'm going down okay as you get to your if you're going to go under your arms you're going to go down this way so it's i'm not sure if it's accurate to say towards the heart okay but i find myself going towards the heart i'm going down this way when i get to my neck and spine area and then if i'm reaching up underneath my arms because i really want to get these lymph nodes here okay i want to get them really well um Yes, I'm also going towards the heart. I'm not doing any kind of circular motions. I'm literally going from top to bottom. That's it. Okay, awesome. Such a great answer and great explanation. Uh, I think everybody was wondering that. So um, yeah, lo lots of love in the chat. You guys um, show Ivy some love. <laughs> She's so amazing. Oh my God. You should see these comments. I mean, you are so loved, Ivy. Um, now, tomorrow we are starting our liver cleanse. Don't forget, uh, Coach Marcus Jones is doing a biz op call in about two to three minutes. So when you jump off here, if you have anybody to add there, please get back with whoever invited you to this call. If you are interested in either the liver cleanse or the parasite cleanse, um, and we will make sure that you get what you need for that cleanse. We have a group. It's called HBN um, Fulvic Detox and Slimmer Group. And you can be added to that group. Okay. So good night, everybody. Thank you again, Dr. Ivy. Totally crushed it again. Once again, we're so blessed to have you. Thanks you guys. See you next time.